an updated, still way too early top 25 on the women's basketball side. Uh, features the Hoosiers just outside of the top 10 after all of the transfer shakeup across women's college basketball. We'll take a look at that as well as a potential scheduling uh, addition or quirk that could lead to some really big non-conference games in February for each basketball season, all in today's episode. You are Locked On Hoosiers, your daily podcast on the Indiana Hoosiers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, guys? It is Wednesday, May 4th. May the 4th be with you, even though I'm not much of a Star Wars fan. This is Locked On Hoosiers, your daily one-stop shop for everything IU Athletics. We have you covered as the one and only place doing daily IU podcasts. Thanks for making Locked On Hoosiers part of your day today, and specifically your first listen every day. Reminder, we're free and available on uh, everywhere that you guys listen or watch podcasts, especially YouTube, where we premiere the episodes there, 7 a.m. daily. Join in on the conversation over there. I'm your host, as always, Jacob Rude. want to thank you guys once again. Uh, be sure to subscribe to Locked on Hoosiers wherever you're listening to us at right now. Uh, also, follow us on Twitter at LO underscore Hoosiers. Just a reminder, I've wanted to mention it throughout the week. I want to try to do a mailbag episode. Uh, I'm not, We haven't gotten a ton of questions yet, so if you guys have any questions at all, just tweet them at us or make a comment on the YouTube, uh, whatever video you see it. Uh, I've said it all week long, but basically I want to try to get a mailbag episode if possible. So just leave any question you guys might have, whether it's about the football team, the basketball teams, men's or women's, uh, the soccer teams, whether it's any of the Hoosiers in the pros, we want to, or I want to see what you guys want to hear about. And it kind of helps guide me to make podcasts you guys want to listen to, especially now that we're in the off season. It's going to be a lot of here and there podcasts. Going to try to come up with a couple series so there's some normalcy, but We're going to be jumping all over the place just a little bit. As I mentioned in the opening, there was a new way too early top 25 for women's college basketball done by ESPN's Charlie Cream, I believe, or Krim. I'm not sure which is the correct pronunciation, but it featured the... uh, The Hoosiers, obviously, they're going to be one of the top 25 teams. Uh, I say obviously, but it's still a little bit wild that this program is to the point where I can say obviously the Hoosiers are going to be in the top 25. Uh, There's still some transfers to shake out, and uh, there's still one really big one, Angel Reese, uh, who was at Maryland, is still in the transfer portal, not entirely certain where she's looking. But she remains uncommitted. But other than that, a lot of the big names, uh, or most of them, have made their decisions. And with all that sorting itself out a little bit, uh, we have a better sense of what the landscape is going to look like for women's college basketball next season. And with that, the Hoosiers came in on number or at number eleven in this uh, top twenty-five. Here's what Charlie had to say about the Hoosiers, uh, it would be hard to duplicate their chemistry of the past two seasons, but the Hoosiers might have a more balanced offensive attack this upcoming season thanks to the transfer portal. Losing Nicole Cardano-Hillary, Ali Patberg, and Ghoul Bay won't be easy, but the additions of Parrish, Scalia, uh, give coach Terry Moore and two three-point shooters to pair with the mid-range game of Grace Berger and the post-play of Mackenzie Holmes. Scalia led the Gophers with 17.9 points per game this season and is the biggest reason Indiana jumped six spots in the ranking and could now be Iowa's biggest challenger in the Big Ten. Big jump for the Hoosiers. And uh, we talked a lot, and there was kind of a lot of buzz about Parrish coming to 
Bloomington for a lot of reasons. She was Miss Basketball. She's from Indiana. In terms of production so far in this to this point in their careers, Scalia is by far the the better of those or has been more productive. And so Indiana getting her is absolutely huge just to have another person that can score, be a dependable scorer, uh, and not just as a three-point shooter, but uh, in multiple ways. So that was really big. And uh, as Charlie said, the biggest reason the Hoosiers are just outside the top 10. To his point, Iowa comes in at number four, and it's going to be a daunting challenge next season to upend them with, uh, I mean, <laughs> I, it feels weird to not even lead with Monica Sinano. Obviously, Caitlin, Caitlin Clark is going to take all of the buzz, but Hoosier fans are very aware of how good Monica Sinano is, and both of those will be back next season. Uh, Iowa was fourth. IU comes in at 11th. The rest of the Big Ten, Ohio State at 15. Uh, the winners of the Big Ten in the regular season last year. Maryland at 16, and Nebraska at 24. Maryland obviously lost uh, Angel Reese, who we mentioned, still undecided in the transfer portal, as well as Ashley Owusu, who transferred from Maryland to Virginia Tech. So two really huge losses that Maryland is going to have to overcome, which is why they've gone from, for the longest time, were the, the torch carrier, I guess, of the Big Ten, to now the fourth best team in the Big Ten, which also speaks to how much the rest of the conference has improved and kind of caught up to Maryland in that sense. Uh, some other familiar names, familiar teams for IU fans. UConn, who beat the Hoosiers last season in the tournament, uh, will or comes in at number two. Stanford, who IU played last season, comes in at number three. Notre Dame comes in at number seven. It'd be it's going to be interesting. I'd love to see an IU Notre Dame women's basketball game. Those two teams are Notre Dame's kind of this more traditional power. Indiana has been the best team in the state for a handful of years running now. It'd be cool to see those two meet, maybe in Gamebridge Fieldhouse, uh, maybe a home-and-home. Home. I'm not sure how they would do it, but that'd be really fun to see. NC State, who Indiana played next se- or last season excuse me, in the Big Ten ACC Challenge, comes in at number 12. So uh, plenty of representation there. Uh, with both Big Ten schools and teams IU played last season. Uh, We're going to do a podcast here in the future at some point in the offseason, kind of predicting what the schedule could look like for both the men's and women's basketball teams between the Big Ten ACC Challenge, between the Gavit games with the men's side, some things like that. So we'll see uh, and take a look at some teams that we might like the Hoosiers to play on both sides as well. But Indiana coming in just outside the top 10 on the women's side in the way too early rankings. Speaking of scheduling, uh, the men's basketball scheduling could have a very unique, interesting quirk or change in the upcoming seasons. We're going to talk about a flex scheduling kind of idea that is starting to really gain momentum that was written about uh, on Tuesday Before we dive into that, summer is coming, and with summer, you're going to need some food on the go. Built Bars are the perfect snack to take with you on family vacations. Throw them in your bags, in your kids' backpacks, uh, wherever it is that you guys are heading off to. Make sure everyone has a bar so you're fueled up for your summer adventures. The best part about Built Bars is they're healthy and delicious. No more sacrificing delicious food for health. With Built Bar, you can have both, and it's easy. All you have to do is go to Built.com and order now. The best part, they're covered in 100% real chocolate, and Built Bar's kind of motto or mission is to make the candy, or I say candy bar, Freudian slip, make the protein bar taste good, and then figure out how to make it healthy. I don't know how they do it, but it clearly works because I keep wanting to call them candy bars. Uh... They always taste amazing, and they have so many flavors to choose from with new limited-time flavors coming up all the time. They're going to be healthier for you than whatever your favorite actual candy bar is. And like I said earlier, you don't have to sacrifice the taste for it as well. So head on over to Built.com, use that promo code LOCKED15, and get 15% off your order. That's promo code LOCKED15. 
for 15% off at built.com. Thanks again, guys, for making Locked On Hoosiers your first listen every day. Again, we are free and available wherever you guys are listening to podcasts. Really interesting idea came across. Actually, somebody texted this to me uh, on Tuesday. It's a flex scheduling. Um, I, I won't even say proposal yet. It's more of an idea, though it is uh, apparently kind of gaining some momentum. Written by Matt Norlander of CBS Sports. Uh, described this this idea. He said 22 of the Division One's 32 conferences have been receptive to, receptive to this. I'm going to try to explain it to you how it would work uh, without getting too confusing. But the idea is that for one week in February, you stop conference play. There's a gap in your conference play. And instead... You play a pair of non-conference games, a home and home in that same week. And the way you would determine your opponent is based on your current kind of ranking, whether it's net, whether it's some algorithm that they have, uh, whatever it may be, it would be, it would serve the purpose of uh, like bubble teams getting to play other bubble teams, top ranked teams getting to play other top ranked teams. It would help uh, when it comes to selection Sunday, when it comes to the tournament, to get a better sense of who is better. You don't have to no longer dis- or kind of deliberate. Well, if IU and whoever it may be were playing one another, who would actually be better? And it would come at a point in the season, we all know that wins in uh, February and even into early March against bubble teams are, carry more weight. Really just wins in general seem to carry more weight. So the idea is uh, kind of right around Valentine's Day, you stop, non-conference, or you stop conference play for a week and say on a Wednesday you play for IU, let's say uh, this past season they would have played another bubble team, a Virginia Tech. IU plays Virginia Tech in Assembly Hall on Wednesday, and then they go to Virginia Tech and play them on Saturday. The next week, you resume conference play. That's the idea. Uh, The matchups would be decided based on whatever the algorithm or, or process would be, and they wouldn't be determined until the end of January. So the catch is you don't really know who you're going to play until a couple of weeks beforehand. And it would serve as kind of a mini selection show or selection Sunday of sorts where you get to see uh, two bubble teams or two. Why not a Duke versus a whoever it may be if Michigan State gets back to that level or something like that. So you have an idea of, oh, this team should be the number one seed. It doesn't have to serve the purpose of only being for bubble teams. And it that works up and down the rankings, no matter where it is. You're going to have two teams playing off that may both be four seeds. And one team comes away with victories in both games. Suddenly they get a couple quality wins. And the committee will remember that if it comes down to Selection Sunday, they're going to get the edge over that other team and, and things of that nature uh, it was created by, or the idea was uh, created by WAC Commissioner uh, Brian Thornton, who had this to say, quote, it's a home and away setup, regardless of conference affiliation, regardless of ranking. The best teams are playing like matchups. So a quad two team is going to play a quad two team. It's merit-based. You earn your way in. You get two great games that you wouldn't be able to get on your own. So for Indiana this last season as well, it would have helped with that non-conference schedule that was not great, to say the least. Uh, one of the other kind of catches would be that you would have to kind of knock out a week of scheduling and non-conference play in December, start conference games maybe a little bit sooner, and then re- then put that week of non-conference games right there in the middle of the schedule. It would kind of break up the monotony of 
conference play in general, which seemed to be something that coaches like the idea of as well. Because honestly, the conference season gets pretty long and you kind of get into this rhythm for better and for worse and kind of breaking that up, getting a kind of refreshing yourself, getting a new challenge would be exciting, would be a way to get the juices flowing again before the stretch run of the season. Uh, it would allow perhaps conferences. I mean, there, there are a couple ways to adjust for this. Uh, I mentioned that I would imagine that's what most people would do or most conferences is just shift a non-conference week into the season. Maybe you just knock out two non-conference games entirely, play, or excuse me, two conference games entirely, and then you stick that in there for non-conference play. So there are a number of different ways that conferences could approach this, but it gives them some flexibility in that sense as well. It doesn't seem like anything's kind of imminent in terms of voting, but if it if it happens, it would happen in the 2023-24 season. Uh, so it could be something in the horizon here very soon. It's a really fascinating idea that I think that has, I think, a lot of potential. And we'll talk about why I like the idea and why I think it would be great for a team like Indiana, like we saw last season, to get the opportunity at a big win like that. Before we dive into any more of that, let's talk about one of our longtime sponsors here, Rock Auto. Uh, with the ever-increasing numbers of makes and models, it's really impossible for whatever your local auto parts store is to have the part you need. You have to get out, drive over there, stand in line just to have them tell you they don't have the part available. They're going to have to order it. And then you have to pay that markup fee as well. Skip all of that and just do it yourself with rockauto.com. It saves you time. It saves you money. You don't have to pay those 30, 50, even 100% markup fees from the auto parts store, from the dealership. Uh, Rock Auto is a family business serving do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years. Their prices are reliably low for every single customer. They have everything you could need, whether it's brake parts, tail lamps, motor oil, or even new floor mats. Uh, go and explore their easy-to-use website today to find the solution to your auto parts needs. Go to rockauto.com right now and see all the parts available for your car or truck. Right, Locked on in their How Did You Hear About Us box so that they know we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. rockauto.com so I think this idea of flex scheduling is one that I can really get behind. I'm someone that wants a tougher schedule. And I think, I would imagine most people are like that. I think I appreciate the benefits of having a tough schedule in the long run. Um, now, there are circumstances where it might not make the most sense. And I'm not saying every year have a top 10, top 20 non-conference schedule. I think I thought this season... It was smart not to have a really daunting non-conference schedule because we didn't we didn't know what we had. We had a new head coach with a lot of new pieces, and there needed to be kind of an on-ramp of sorts into the season. Maybe you could have swapped out one of the those cupcake games uh, for one more tougher opponent potentially, but ultimately speaking, I was fine with the non-conference schedule. It ultimately didn't cost Indiana barely. They got just enough wins during it uh, over Notre Dame, St. John's. Uh, more so, they avoided bad losses during that time. And it allowed them to get their feet under them, head into conference play, pick up a couple wins, so on and so forth. But generally speaking, like I think this upcoming season, there is no reason not to have a much tougher strength of schedule, especially if Trace comes back, because. Uh, I mean, it's, it's a familiar team with a familiar coach and based on what Mike Woodson has said, uh, he wants a tougher schedule anyway. And part of that would be having a game with flex scheduling like this because you're playing a team as good as you are. And so I really don't see how this is, would be anything but a benefit unless you're really just trying to duck playing good teams, which, Maybe you could make that argument for some of the 
smaller conferences, but I can't imagine anybody in the Big Ten is trying to avoid playing good non-conference teams because you're just playing good conference teams anyway. It would create a lot of really intriguing matchups at the time of year they do it as well. Indiana was a bubble team for most of last season. I know for a stretch they were kind of securely in, but when you started looking at when this would take place uh, and what Indiana was doing at that point, if you look at mid-February, Indiana was coming off losses to Illinois, Northwestern, Michigan State, uh, and the week they would probably do it was the week they lost at home to Wisconsin. So that was a team that was sliding pretty rapidly. So taking a break from non-conference play and playing against um, uh, or taking a break from conference play and playing against non-conference teams, excuse me, easier said than done, would be a bit of a refresher, a bit of a, a chance to reset things. And like I said, there are some interesting teams Indiana could play. If you look at teams that were like also on the bubble last season, you'd be looking at a an Iowa State. Maybe they would have played Wyoming in that uh, kind of flex scheduling, a home-and-home home with Wyoming. Maybe they play Virginia Tech, like I said earlier, or a UAB, a Richmond that um, they barely got into the tournament. I'm not sure. I use the kind of tournament rankings to look at who was right there on the bubble with IU. A lot of these other teams uh, it might not have applied to. Memphis, potentially, they were a team kind of on the bubble right around there with Indiana. But it gives you a chance to play a team that is at your level and gives you a chance to earn some quality wins. And at that point in the season, uh, you're very comfortable with what you are as a team versus maybe earlier in the year where you're still trying to figure things out. So. Um, ultimately, I think this would be a really good idea. It's a really fun idea, an innovative idea, and one that I I really don't see a lot of uh, downside to it unless you're just a purist who thinks from uh, the end of December until the beginning of March should only be conference play and that there should be nothing else in between. I always liked breaking up conference play with non-conference games I know the ACC did it for a while where they'd have a week uh, kind of in the middle of non-conference play where they'd play, or excuse me, a week in the middle of ACC play where they'd play a non-conference team. So I'm in favor of kind of breaking up that monotony a little bit and adding a little bit, something a little bit different. And I think this would be a fun way to do it. It would give teams a chance to pick up a quality win or two. It would give teams a chance at a true road game that, uh, like for Indiana, for example, struggled on the road, it would give them another chance at that. So it's a unique idea, and I can understand why it's picking up momentum. It seems like something a lot of teams are in favor of. Uh, Michigan State's AD was somebody quoted in there, so potentially the Big Ten is inter interested in this as well. But it's a really fascinating idea that I think has a lot of potential and could be a lot of fun if it's executed correctly and uh, offer team or offer fans a chance at a lot of interesting matchups that we wouldn't have gotten anyway. Maybe there's a year where Indiana and Kentucky finally play in flex scheduling in a home and home uh, to, that John Calipari can't even turn down. So, uh, how much fun would that be? A home and home with Kentucky in February when tournament uh, resume matters the most. Uh, that would be a lot of fun to play in the same week. And beating Kentucky twice in the same week, man, I might ascend at that point. Like, that would be the greatest thing ever. Uh, but chances to play games like that are uh, are rare. And to do it twice in the same week would be a great opportunity that I can't imagine many coaches would turn down. So, fun idea to think about. We'll see if it keeps gaining momentum, keeps gaining steam, and it's something that's implemented, but something different that I thought we could talk about today that um, is just such a unique idea, not something I would have thought of elsewise. Thanks again, guys, for making Locked On Hoosiers your first listen every day. Uh, we'll be back with you later this week talking Trace Jackson Davis's draft status, so make sure you guys are subscribed uh, to Locked On Hoosiers. Now make your second listen, Locked On Big Ten with host Nate Dickinson. Get caught up in all the Big Ten news. I'll be on there on tomorrow's episode as well. Uh, I appear or I join him weekly on the Thursday episode. 
So you guys can tune in over there on Thursdays to get the latest on the Big Ten. Uh, whatever is going on in the conference that week, we have you guys covered. Last week, we talked about the draft. Before that, we talked about uh, the Big Ten championship games uh, going from uh, Indianapolis to Minnesota for the basketball thing. Whatever it is, we have you guys covered. Uh, appreciate all the love, support you guys continue to give. Follow us on Twitter. Subscribe to the podcast wherever you are listening to us at. Uh, leave a rating and review if you can. It helps us out a ton. Most importantly, though, guys, have a terrific Wednesday and LEO.